Now, anyone who isn't watching Mythic Quest on Apple TV definitely should be. Although I'm not sure why you'd be watching this video if you weren't watching the show, but still, watch the show. What's up guys, I'm Josh and welcome to the Opinion Arcade, where this week I'm talking about another incredible episode of Mythic Quest. Fans of season one will remember, and when I say remember, I mean we'll never ever be able to forget about the incredible standalone episode, Dark Quiet Death. That episode showed the story of Jay Johnson's Doc and Krista Malloy's Bean, and how the two of them met, fell in love, made a video game, and then everything fell apart. It's basically a standalone mini-movie that doesn't directly link with the rest of the series, one that manages to introduce its characters, make you care about them, feel for them, as well as really get you to think, in a little over 20 minutes. And so going into season two, I half expected some kind of follow-up or spiritual sequel, and to say season two, episode six, backstory delivered that, is an understatement. The episode differs from A Dark Quiet Death, which I think is important as it wouldn't really make sense to just have another loosely connected but not really that relevant to the main story mini movie about other people in the games industry. This time backstory focuses on the origins of Mythic Quest's lead writer C.W. Longbottom. The episode shows his arrival in New York as a hopeful sci-fi writer and his fast friendship with two other authors as they write copy for a short story magazine. While the other two writers, Peter Cromwell and A.A. Goldsmith, love each other's work and, unfortunately for Carl, also eventually fall in love with each other, they tell Carl his story is lacking something deeper. He rewrites multiple drafts, in his words, changing something on every page, but doesn't understand that it's the core of his work that needs to be changed, not just surface details. Carl is a huge sci-fi fan and clearly appreciates what makes a good story. He just can't see how his work isn't a good story. But where the episode takes an interesting turn and leans more into the CW as a character is when a distraught CW walks past a TV playing Pong and he sees into the future. This is where we see that CW may not be the world's greatest writer, he might not understand the problems with his story, but he is in his own way a visionary. From simply looking at the lines hitting a ball at each other on Pong, CW has a vision of what video games could be. How TV will change the world, which at that point is looked down on as a storytelling medium. There CW is reignited in his confidence and decides to give his book to the groundbreaking sci-fi writer Isaac Asimov, which is a moment of growth and self-confidence for Carl. That unfortunately proves to be the beginning of his undoing. I don't get too much further into it as everyone should definitely just watch the episode, even if you're not watching the show. And again, who's going to be watching the show and be this far into a video about season 2 episode 6? But even if you aren't into the show, definitely watch this episode. Ultimately though, Carl uses that connection with Asimov as a way to get to the top, but not on his own merit. It shows when at his lowest, Carl will take the easy way out to get where he wants to be. The episode somewhat tragically highlights that CW was an out of time visionary in many ways, but in other ways he just didn't have what it took. He isn't a bad person, he just wants to tell his stories, which he thinks are great. Unfortunately, other people don't seem to agree. It also brings up an interesting idea that, although we definitely get the idea throughout the show up until this point that CW is a bit of a joke, but he did predict the popularity and storytelling capabilities of video games decades before anyone else did. And you know, he did create the story for like one of the world's most popular games in Mythic Quest. Now obviously you can't fully talk about backstory without mentioning its follow-up, Peter, the next episode of Mythic Quest, which jumps back to the modern day and shows CW going to visit Peter. Each expects an apology from the other and drunken arguments and emotional reveals ensue. And so with the follow up, it makes backstory a little less of a standalone than something like Dark Quiet Death, but that only adds to the emotion that it manages to deliver in still a pretty short space of time, but even between the two episodes. The episode is written by Craig Mazin, creator of HBO's Chernobyl, who features in the episode as the magazine's editor after appearing as the insufferable games tester Lou in season one. The episode is obviously written expertly, but it's taken to another level thanks to Josh Brenner's pitch perfect interpretation of a young, more innocent, less crushed by the world, and lots of drinking and drugs, C.W. Longbottom. Both episodes, but backstory in particular, is a truly incredible mini movie that does more in a little over 20 minutes than most films do in two hours. Like much of Mythic Quest, it explores the difficulty in the creative process and the sacrifices people make along the way. And yet there's kind of a happy ending to that episode and an especially happy ending at the end of the next episode, which ties it all together. And just like with A Dark Quiet Death, which came with a companion website that lets you play the game, 
Backstory has an audiobook short story narrated by C.W. Longbottom with a foreword and afterword from Iron Grimm. And again, like the game, it's great. Thanks to anyone and everyone who has made it this far into my ramblings. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on Mythic Quest and pop culture in general. And let me know your thoughts on Mythic Quest in the comments below.